guys, welcome back to another first impression video. We are looking at the Indie Pattern Company Pattern Fantastique today. Um, if you don't know, if you're new here, this is my video series where I take a look at an entire sewing pattern collection and we review it on the whole. Like we look at each pattern together and kind of discuss um, the design, the fabrication, fabric choices that you have. We look at fit and all that kind of fun stuff and really helps kind of introduce all of us to a brand new sewing pattern company. So um, I always like to start these videos, especially when we're working with indie patterns with their about us page so that I can learn a little bit about where in the world they're from and a little bit about kind of the design aesthetic that we can kind of get ready for. So Pattern Fantastique is from Nita Jane McMahon. She was originally out of Melbourne, has traveled to Vietnam, and I, I guess lived there for a while, and is now back in Fremantle, Australia. And forgive me if I'm not putting the emphasis on the right syllables there. Is it Fremantle? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I'm sorry, Australians. Um, but she says that her, uh, her brand is inspired by travel, art and design, and eclectic aesthetic, which combines to create a new approach to fashion. Um, Design-driven sewing pattern brand. And yeah, so what I'm picturing with these words, travel, art and design, and eclectic aesthetic, is something that's a little bit unique, um, something that is not going to be super fitted, something that is going to be easy, breezy, fun to wear, easy to wear, fun to make, those kinds of things. So let's see what we've got here. Let's start with the Terra Pant. Pricing US dollars is $15. That seems reasonable for a pant. Um, let's see what information we get here. PDF format or print format, and the print format is $24, okay. So we'll go PDF. And then it says, the Terra has been revised. Okay, our classic pan is now in its second edition. Please read here, we're constantly, okay. We don't need to compare new to old. All we care about is the latest and greatest. It's a high-waisted pant tailored with deep pleats that fall into an elegant tapered and slight bowed leg. Finished with side pockets, back patch pockets, and optional belt loops. Make, a, make an arrange of fabric for your new pant staple. They exude cool and comfortable with chic edge for work. Okay, then there's this whole section on fit. That's interesting. It's cut in the, it's cut high in the waist. The front waist tilts slightly forward to maintain a flat front with a long line into the small of your back. I mean, yes, thank you so much for that. I feel like maybe newbies might be a little bit like, what does all of that mean? But basically the back rise is longer than the front rise to accommodate for your butt is, is the quick and dirty of it. <laughs> there is additional ease of four centimeters in the finished waist. So that's kind of tackling any um, like uh, gar uh, body measurement versus finished garment measurements. They've done the math for us. The thigh front and depth is generous for an easy fit and a slightly cropped to ankle length with a fully enclosed hem you can turn up or leave neat. Okay, then we have sizes six to 30. That gives us centimeters, inches. Okay, that gives us in inches, 30, let's call it 32 inches in the bust, up to 55. And then for the hip, it's 34 to 58. So that's pretty inclusive. That's about as good as it gets. I think when I spoke with um, some uh plus size sewist in like my community, they said up to 60 inches is what they like to see. So we're, we're very, very close to that. Um, intermediate level for these pants, fabric can be made in a wide range of fabrics, cotton, denim, linen, cord, velvet. And then they talk about weights, grams per meter, use a tighter, crisper, hardier weave to provide stability. Yeah, they really go into a lot of detail about which fabrics work and why. And I think that's really helpful as you start to understand fabrication. Um, there's like 
this sentence here is for the newbies, right? Like just pick one of these. And then for those of us that want to get like really into detail about the fabric choices that we should consider, that's what this whole second part is about. Okay, then all your notions and then the different formats. It does come in copy shop, uh, instruction booklet, and A4 US letter PDF. Okay, amazing. All right, let's look at some of these photos. So as she said, relaxed fit, right? We're going for like a, almost like a menswear trouser. Uh, we've got the pleats, we've got the belt buckles or belt loops, fly front, and it has that slightly bowed um, out seam. You can't really see it on the actual pants, but, or when she's actually wearing them, which is a nod to how good the drafting is. Um, but then you've got your little ankle length situation happening there. Can I? Oh, no. Okay. Then, okay, so here's another version where she's not got her leg, like her knee bent. I love seeing this. This is just a straight line view, right? Straight from the front, you can see, you know, how all the fabric is falling perfectly. There's no weird wrinkles. There's no pulling, none of that. Um, so that looks really good. This is probably a linen fabric, too. And then here's the back. Again, she's got this leg bent, but this one is straight. So you can see everything falling from the bomb. The crotch curve looks excellent. And then there's the pattern cover. Here's the pattern back, I guess. Okay, and that's all we're gonna get for pictures. But honestly, it's not a lot. There's only five of them, but it's enough, right? You can see that these are drafted well. Like I would feel confident going in and making trousers like this. Um, it's super high waisted. Like she said, you know, look how high that's sitting on her body. Um, this is her bust line here. So she's like me where there's not a lot of room between your bust and your waist. And then your hip is way down low. We've got very similar body shapes actually, which I like that for me. <laughs> Yay for me. Um, but yeah, just really pretty with no pulling or anything. Good fit and lots and lots of good information in the listing, which I like to see. Okay, next we've got, wait, this is a set. So let's, well, is this set the pattern? Okay, yeah, all right, the set is the pattern, great. So this is the harmonic set, top and skirt, two in one sewing pattern. Still $15, even though you've got a top and a skirt that we're gonna be looking at. Wow, this looks like fun. All right, down here, um, a tribute to flag symbology and 70s disco glam. Yes, a top and a skirt set to maximize wardrobe possibilities. It's packed with features using the soft, elegant fit as a canvas, circular keyhole neckline, balloon sleeve into a faux shirred cuff. What's faux shirring? Is that where you put the elastic in instead of the shirring? It's like little elastic casings plus optional wave and contrast external facing to dial up the statement. Pair with the skirt for a twinning wave hem. The shaped faux shirred deep waistband offers a perfect mid-hip fit and includes pockets. Can be made with or without the wave feature. So that's really like four looks in one. Um, now with layered files. 13 sizes, loose fit, semi-shaped shoulder for a touch of squareness above the flowing balloon sleeve. Armhole is super deep and cuts into the bodice with a cape-like effect. Darts in the back neck, covered by a curved yoke and bust for elevated fit. The body is loose with a slight flaring and curved center back seam. So many details in here. Waistband shaped by four channels. There we go. Housing, narrow, elastic at different lengths. So she's answering my questions kind of as I have them. I don't have to go anywhere to search for the answers to these. So I love that. Um, creating a textured and shaped yoke. Perfect midpoint to the harmonic volume, meaning the top, I think. Like when you tuck it in, um, the elastic can be adjusted mid-make to tighten or loosen the waist. All right. Fabrics are... Lighter textiles that gather well and have enough stability to form the wave shapes like linen, cotton, 
and stable varieties of cellulose fabrics, which that's rayon. So like rayon twill. Um, rayon lawn or rayon blends of certain kinds. Um, and then here's all the weight and information. Non-standard grain lines are utilized to reduce fabric requirements. Therefore, di directional prints are not advised. Interesting. So the cutting layout, you will cut off grain at certain points. All right. Super drapey fabrics for the experienced seamer. Excellent. And then here's your notions, which is where I normally would have gone to find what kind, what she meant by faux shirring. Um, so she says that you need the narrow elastic here. So that would have answered that, but she already did, which I love that feasible interfacing intermediate skill level. And then breaks down. Okay. What you need there. Okay, great. So here is the whole set. Um, let's look at it kind of big. All right. So here's the keyhole that she talked about that ties. I'm sure you don't have to tie that either. And then that really nice big, sleeve with a dropped arm size it's nice and low it kind of like becomes part of the bodice right like if you can imagine a princess seam would have been here kind of it kind of becomes part of the bodice and then you've got that interesting contrast on the bottom here's the skirt band okay so this is interesting because it's the channels are right here 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 and here so in between you get like really pretty gathered sections. I don't know, that's just, you know, I guess I was picturing all the channels butting up to each other, but they don't. There's like a good amount of space in between. So the gathering exists from your natural waist to your high hip. Very flattering and comfortable, I would imagine. And then there's the really cool wave hem. Very interesting, okay. Here's the little outfit together. Look at those sleeves. It's kind of a lot together, I gotta say. Like, well, the top, well, they're both a lot. And together, they're a lot, a lot. But I mean, it's giving very much like, um, anytime anything feels really artsy to me, I always picture like a art gallery owner. That's the, that's the character that I put to mind, but yeah. Okay, good. So she gave me a photo of the, or gave us a photo of the shirt untucked. I love to see that. So we can see just how long it is. It goes basically to the bottom of those elastic casing. So that's the high hip length. Try to imagine that with like plain denim or like even like flare denim would be really pretty. And then here it is without the waves. I don't love how the facing is see-through on this option, but whatever. Um, that's just fabric choice. That's just using linen versus other fabrics that aren't as sheer. But yeah, and then you have this really pretty turned up, nice, thick, I don't know, maybe one and a half, two inch hem. I, I, I personally don't love them together, but I can totally see them as separates. I think this skirt is super fun. And definitely a statement maker. You wear that with just like even a bodysuit. Where'd it go? I wear this with like even just a bodysuit or like a, I'm going to say crop top. Just something to like let the skirt shine um, with all kinds of different shoes. I mean, you could do a heel and dress it up. You could do a boot. You, I mean, all kinds of things. You could also play around the length a little bit. This mid shin length, not my favorite either on me just because I don't have super long legs. But if this ended, if these waves were a little bit higher like on the thigh, that could that could help I think with proportions a little bit on someone who's only 5'5". Five five. I don't know how tall she is. Okay, excellent, Harmony. It's like yin yang, right? That's why we, I guess the waves are representing that. Okay, here is a little visor. We're not going to spend too much time on this, but I mean, looks as good as any other visor I've ever seen. I wonder what the, it's $12. I wonder what the, um, oh wow, that very, very like high coverage. Perfect for scrap busting. That's true. I wanted to see the notions. Here we go. So, oh, there's kits available. Love that. 
So you buy this kit and you get all of what you need. So you don't have to go source it from a million different places. That's super helpful. I don't know what the shipping is like to get to the US or other area other, outside of Australia, but um, that could be a really great way for you to save some time for sure. Elastic buckram, aka cotton fusible interfacing. Uh, yep, and then millinery wire <laughs> that's like hat millinery is hat making a uh, very thick fishing line and then a slightly larger wire these are metal small tubes that are crimped on the end of the wire to fix the small amount of gaffer tape can be used instead wow that's like words I've never heard before so that would be fun and interesting let me see Oh yeah, there's your wire and everything that you need. Okay, cool. I kind of want to see what shipping is. Let's just play around here for a second. Um, it's only eight bucks. Totally worth it. It does take a while, almost a week and a half, but I think that that's, that's, I would do that over sourcing all that wire and weird named things a million, a million times over trying to find it on my own. Okay, so there's that kit. All right, here's the Esther dress. This feels like right up my alley. Um, you have to scroll all the way down to get to the, the description. The Esther dress was designed, or I'm sorry, the, the Esther dress design was inspired by lightly puffy cloud-like seersucker fabric gifted to me. Okay, simple construction, maximizing volume and texture, It'll make you feel like you're from another world. Okay, anchored by a rope that ties off at the center front split, the rope crosses the center back into a loop, radiating gathers. The loop detail lowers the center back volume for an elegant silhouette. Two views, one with sleeves and one without, and yes, it has pockets. And then here's all that information on fit. I'm not gonna get too in the weeds on that going forward. I just love that she has that. So when you're considering fit, and you're considering buying this, Considering fit, you can read the details there. But the construction of ether is simplified for textured and specialty fabrics. Um, Esther works light to midweight fabrics that gather well, including silk, cotton, linen. Fabric weights that are generally below 200 grams per meter. And then here is your notions. You certainly don't have to use the cotton rope. Um, you could just make a string, right? You can make a, like a drawstring. Okay. Yeah. And then has all the information on how to like really make it super professional looking. Okay. So here's the dress. I want to see the front first. Okay. Okay. That's actually a lot different than I thought. Um, you, we're legitimately using rope here. Um, Okay, like I said, you don't have to use the rope, but it does create a very, very interesting, unique look. And here's some of that stuff she was telling you about how to tie off the ends. I mean, this looks like something you would see in like, not even like a boutique, like I'm thinking like high, high, high end. This looks like a $300 dress to me. Here's the front. What's there's no difference. Okay, here's the front. Here's this does look different though. But I guess it's oh, that's the one with the sleeve. Okay, I much prefer the one with the sleeve. Um, I do love, love, love this sleeve. But the rope is going through the neckline here, up the shoulder, and then it goes in the back and twist. I love this. This is so fun and cute. Very unique. There's the the sleeveless version of the back. Yeah, again, I might play around with length a little bit, like because this is essentially just like a box. Like, uh, where'd it go? This is just sort of like a boxy silhouette. The length of this can make you look shorter than you are. So play around with showing a little bit of leg or making it full on maxi length. 
but I think this is really cool and cute. Again, you don't have to use the rope. Does she address that? How you can make like a drawstring instead? Um, if you're concerned about rope casings or binding pieces being too difficult to handle. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, use a planar contrast. No, 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 no. That doesn't. That's not what we're talking about. Okay, so she really just wants you to lean into the the rope, but I, you don't have to. You could definitely make like a, think about like a casing and then you just put, um, I, I guess you could do like a, what's the, like piping cording. Um, you could put that inside of a casing, I think, and that would give you like the, you know, circular like tube. But I think you could also just do thicker drawstring. The rope is thicker than I thought it would be, which is why I'm kind of considering. But if you had like a one inch strap, yeah, it would lose some of its structure. But especially in the sleeved version where you're really only seeing this part of it. I don't know. I kind of feel like you could get away with it. Maybe you put some like if it's flat, right? And it's not. What's the word I'm thinking of? Like a. Oh, not a cone. What is, what's the shape? I can't think of it. That's round <laughs> tube, I guess. Um, if you're going for like a more flat, like if you don't care that it's not a tube shape and you're, it's okay being flat, you could even insert some kind of, oh God, I don't know, like um, something super hard. I'm thinking like some kind of stay tape or something that's even harder than that and you just slide it in there and that that maintains the shape that you need, but it still needs to bend and make a loopy thing. I don't know. This is, this is interesting to me. I would play around with some different options if you're not into the rope, but that is cool and cute and unique and different for sure. This is the Valley Valley dress. Okay. So, all right. So 70 glam, 70s style glam smock. High neckline surrounded by sleeve and yoke gathers, volumes of fabric, fine ties, top stitch facings, and pocket bags will transform the simplest of materials into a romantic textured detailed dresser top. Two neckline options, drop neckline and a plunge neckline, and also is suitable for breastfeeding. That's thoughtful. The size range here only goes up to 26. Okay, so it's not their full size range. The yoke is the key fitting point with a high neckline and close fitting yoke line that gives form to an otherwise full flowing dress. That's her way of saying that like if you have really big hips and you don't fit into the size chart, you're probably going to be fine. Okay. All right, let's look at these photos again. So hard to see with the black. But you do have this yoke here it has a, I guess maybe a stand collar with some ties up here, but also here too. You can see the facing. The sleeve is really beautiful. And then again, it just flows away from the body, just like a straight line dress. The hem has a bit of a curve to it too. There it is tied both times. Oh, there it is as a top. Kind of love that. Yeah, that's really cute. Oh, here it is with stripes. You can kind of see all the different pieces. Yeah, I like the length on this one too, especially the scoop. It's really flattering. Pretty... Yeah, that sleeve is next level. So I guess when she was talking about the neckline, she really just meant that you could either... Well, now I don't know what she meant. Oh, no, there are two necklines. Look how this, this opening only goes to the top of the bust. And this one comes way down here. I'll zoom in. See how this one drops lower? 
and then you tie that and you get a little peekaboo or you can leave them both open and have a full on like exposed cleavage situation. I see, I see, I see. Dang, I really like this one too. Yeah, that one's really cool. Mostly for, I didn't mean to back out of it totally. Mostly for the, the sleeve design is really cool, but I really love like a flowy top especially in the fall and winter when you're wearing more pants. And most of my pants tend to be fitted around the waist and hip and then maybe flow away into a flare or a straight leg or whatever. Um, so yeah, super cute. Okay. Next we have Mersis. Mersis. Okay, we're getting like a similar vibe now that we've seen like three or four of these where we have like a statement sleeve and a simple body, especially from the waist down. The designs tend to be pretty simple and basic. Maybe there's something going on in the yoke, but um, really all about statement sleeves. Look at it in that metallic. And then there it is as a top. There's the back. Oh, is that supposed to look like what I think it looks like? Do you guys think it looks like what I think it looks like? Like I'm getting female anatomy fallopian tube vibes. <laughs> Am I the only one that sees that? Oh gosh, okay, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, that is what it is, right? That is the design, but maybe like the little whole thing should not be black. Maybe it would take away if they were like just slightly darker than the <laughs> I don't know I don't I can't unsee it okay um, the shift dress for superstars draws on 80s glam with generous shapes and peekaboo features that suggest more than they reveal dynasty balloon sleeves a deep v at the front and back and midway v for the front neckline the center front seam features a wide seam allowance top stitch down to enhance the long line from shoulder to hem meaning this um, the center front hem features a miter corner to finish and split for the longer lengths. So you have the top, I guess that's probably like knee or thigh length. And then this one goes down to your mid calf. Like that's the longer one there. That's the top tucked in. Longer. Oh yeah, it is like, oh yeah, it is pretty short. Mid thigh It is kind of mini. That one's my favorite. I like the big sleeve and then the mini um, length. I don't know. It just feels like balances everything out. I wish we could see more of that. All right. Thin shirt. Now, this one's 24 Oh, that's print PDF. Okay. $15 still. Okay. Yes. Look at this. Okay. So, these are... One of those that you think to yourself, that looks crazy, but <laughs> up and you find yourself reaching for it all the time. It's just the perfect layering piece. It can go over tank tops. It can be tucked in. It can be worn untucked completely. And it just gives such a cool slouchy, like you grabbed like your dad's button down. This one might be exaggerated even more, but look how, I mean, that just looks so cool, right? Especially with those pants that um, was the first listing that we saw. Yeah, that would be like exceptional. But this whole like oversized slouchy vibe, normally people are just buying button down shirts that are four sizes too big, but this one was made with intention to be oversized. So it's still thoughtful about a woman's body and how it fits and Different little sneaky ways I'm sure that she's using to make it not just be four sizes too big, but be like intentionally full. And look how cool that collar is. There's also ties on the wrist. You could leave those off, but you don't have to. Here's a good example, okay? So if it were fully just four sizes too big, it would be super, super, super big through here too, right? This is a drop shoulder, but it would even be like 
dropped even more. Um, the volume in the back, I think, is also intentional, but it would be disproportionately so if it were just too big. It fits in the shoulder and then billows out from there, and that's what you get from making something intentionally balloon-like. Yeah, that gives a really good idea of the side seam shape. And the fact that it really does taper in, like this is a, this comes in a lot and it's pretty fitted down here, but you could tie it off and have a really cute look there. I mean, look at that. She looks like the most chic, like interior designer, painter, mural person I've ever seen. <laughs> Super cool. Okay, here's the description. Finn, the not-so-classic classic shirt, for sure. The Finn shirt has a super breezy drop shoulder and bat wing sl style sleeve balanced by a nipped-in high hemline and cuffs. Three collar and two cuff options to choose from to mix and match for three very different looks. 6 to 26 on this one. And then fabric that's fine enough to make collars and cuffs. Silks, cotton shirting, cotton poplin, shirtweight linens, shirtweight denim, and cellulose based fibers, aka rayon. Yeah, let's look at the necklines again. Okay, so you have the tie one, you have your basic like little collar, and then you also have just a plain stand collar. Yeah, and then you have sleeve options too, which we didn't really talk about, but I think we have like a like a cuffed sleeve, a plain sleeve, and then the or I guess a plain cuff and then the tie cuff so that's that's like the plain cuff rolled back I guess that's the tie cuff tie cuff tie cuff tie cuff the rolled back cuff so maybe there's only two I'm guessing super cool though are we getting a sense of the vibe of her design aesthetic, I am. Taya, dress and cami. That is just, I mean, in terms of fit, that is about as good as it gets. There it is in a shorter length. And then that's the top length. So I think we're going to get three lengths of this. And they all tie at the top. So it's, yeah, pretty straightforward little straight shift dress with um ties at the top and then look, I think there's like double French darts and then you're pocketing here it says Tay A Taye Taya that made it more confusing than not having that is a loose shift dress that can be worn as a simple dress or a pinafore over a blouse utilitarian features include Deep facings, mitered cornered hems, and side splits, top stitching to enhance style lines, optional pockets, and striking long stretched out straps for a vampy finish on an otherwise easy wearing dress. So it's like simple, but a little bit elevated. I get that. I wish so many of these weren't in black. Black is just so hard to photograph. I'm, I'm sure she knows that. Um, this is the Feta jacket. Why is that the cutest thing I've ever seen? The sleeve, I mean, if I ever think to myself, I need a cool and interesting sleeve, like I need a dress or something with a cool sleeve, I'm gonna think of Pattern Fantastique first. The sleeves on all these designs are incredible. Look how cute. I absolutely adore how it's like fitted through the bodice and then you just have this really super cool sleeve. That, I don't even think does it justice. That looks not great. But this first photo, come on. The coolest. I need this. I need this. Uh, the Feta jacket was developed using a combination of draping and flat paper pattern making. Fabric carved into bold, clean shapes. A nod to the classic Chanel tweed. The sensibility of a bomber jacket and the humor and volume of a Victorian era sleeve. For sure. I totally get that. Yeah. Two different styles depending on your fabric weight choice. A jacket weight cotton with patch pockets. 
for the transitional seasons or a blanket weight wool with welt pockets and full lining for the deep winter warmth. Yeah, okay. Love that. Yeah, it looks like there's... Yeah, it's hard to... <sighs> Let's see. Yeah, it's hard to tell exactly what's going on. Let's zoom in and see if that helps at all. No, uh, a little bit. I think what's happening is, um, I wish we had just some straightforward line drawings. I mean, these are cute and all, but not super helpful. But I think we have kind of like a yoke, a princess seam. And then there's also a seam here and a little cuff seam. I think that's what's happening. Love that one so much. Here is the celestial maxi dress. Wait, that's cute. Again, pretty simple, straightforward from the waist down. We've got a yoke and then like a, just like a, I don't know, like a tube sleeve. What do you even call that? It's simple in design, but executed, like makes it look more complicated. This is our Super Femme Space Age gown. Oh, I, sorry. This is our Super Femme Space Age gown. Strong lines and careful shaping give this dress major volume and an elegant fit. The Celestial comes with length options from maxi to top lengths and can be made out of most woven fabrics. Perfect for getting married on Mars or becoming your favorite no fuss dress. Yeah, she doesn't really say um, or doesn't illustrate the different lengths, but you can imagine like top, thigh, knee, midi, maxi, right? I'm guessing. And then all the bodices are the same. And this one she did like print mixing. These are three different stripes. I, at first I thought that was a uh, strap and I was like, wait, no. And then I realized it was all one. So yeah, obviously with like the super, you know, bold stripe, you can really highlight what's going on. But even if it were like a plain fabric or like an all over design, I think that the silhouette is what's like the standout here. It's really, really flattering. Like she says, she described it as um, strong lines and careful shaping. Give this dress major volume and an elegant fit. Like you can have both of those things. It's, I think it's one of those things that you would wear and people would compliment you and you would kind of be surprised. Like, really? This simple little thing to put together? Like, but it would be very flattering. This is the Aeolian t-shirt dress sewing pattern. Boxy top, right? The Aeolian is a perfect boxy cotton tee, as tall as it is wide. Square shaped sleeve. Square shaped sleeve. I've never heard of such a thing. Strategically inserted to the armhole for maximum 3D body. Sized down, it makes a perfect sheath. Neat but not tight. Excellent in a glamour knit for a super clean mini cocktail dress. Sized up, it responds with mega drapes and caftan-esque volume. Okay, yeah. Well, she certainly knows how to make a boxy tee seem way more special than, <laughs> than, it, than it appears. It seems so simple, yet she makes it sound like a lot of thought went into this one, which makes me curious. I'm not a sheath girly, like they just don't look super good on me, but you can't go wrong with a boxy tee or a boxy top. All right, we've got the Sula's hat. That is just a very full hat. Oh, I like this view. You can see how it's a little bit shorter in the back than the front. 
uh, let's see, do we have the, no kits on this one. That's, I wish there were kits. I'd be more inclined to make this, but it's named for an ancient Celtic goddess of the sun who was taught to reside by the thermal spring in Bath. This is Pattern Fantastique's offering for those who wish to embody a goddess lounging by the water or in the backyard with a paddling pool. Okay. Yeah, not much to say about it. Um, thread, thread, cording, heavyweight needles, and then this fusible buckram. Maybe if you buy the kit from the other one, you'll understand more what buckram is and then be able to source it yourself. Or maybe it's one of those things you just type into Google and then it's like a million different options. Okay, glacial tea. Skivvy? What's a skivvy? Bodysuit? The glacial tea is a first style for a series of pattern patterns with printless instructions. The blog hosts a set of linked photo rich instructions on how to make a t-shirt from what stitch to choose to inserting a knit band. Okay. Classic base layer, sheep, super high neckline, streamlined shape with subtle shirt tail hemline, broader shoulder line and sculpted armhole gives this wardrobe essential a modern point of difference designed with requirements of Merino knits in mind. Yeah, I mean, it looks good. The neckband options, narrow, crew, and skivvy. Note that rib knit contrast is required for the crew option. What's a skivvy? Oh, a turtleneck. Is a skivvy a turtleneck? I've never heard that word. What were the options? Narrow, crew, and skivvy. Yeah, it's got to be a turtleneck. Okay, cool. It does look good. I can't necessarily say that it's like a whole lot different than other t-shirt sewing patterns, but this is what she's talking about with the, with the extended shoulder and the well-designed arms eye. What does she say that that creates a uh, broader shoulder line sculpted armhole gives this wardrobe essential a modern point of reference okay just a little bit more updated and then in the fit section she talks about the tightness being adjusted on different areas of the body to create a neat fit around the armhole and shoulder without unnecessary cling throughout the lower arm or body like who, I would never have considered any of that. I don't know. Like I just, I guess that's why I'm not the designer. But yeah, it does look good. All right, I think we're on our last one. This is the Calyx Smock. Oh, why is that all so adorable? Oh, as a dress. Yeah. Yeah, a thousand times yes. Look how cool that looks. It's a little bit sweeter version. There it is tucked in. Mm, don't love it with the, with the circle skirt. Okay, so the calyx smock is named for part of the flower where petals and fruit art form. Balance between the decorative and utilitarian idea stems from a memory of my mother's hairdressing apron she wore in the late 70s combined with the handmade gathered smock she made me at the same time okay the calyx smock is suitable for many woven fabrics from fine sheer lightweight silks for some full floaty romance to midweight denim paired with a glacial skivvy which i now know is a turtleneck when layering winter layering is needed the limit is to fabrics too thick to bind after gathering, thick denim and jumbo cord, coat weight fabrics, etc. Six to 18. So this is definitely, this is one of her earlier patterns before 
you know, we were, you know, all paying attention to plus size and being fully inclusive. So maybe she'll update that one. I think it would be okay for me because it is so wide. Like this is my widest area. This is like my plus size area and my straight size area. So if you're pear shaped, if you're a V, I'm sorry, a, a inverted triangle, you'd probably be okay. So, but again, one of those like basic designs that you don't think a lot of thought goes into, but it looks so good because a lot of thought was put into it. And I think that's like my major takeaway from Pattern Fantastique is yes, the designs can read, like we just looked at line drawings, they could read a little bit simple, but I think the execution of them create a balance between fullness and flattery. Like you can't, those two things can live together. It can be feminine, flattering, and full. All the Fs. <laughs> um, some really, really great sleeve work here. Um, and I would just feel confident that it was designed with fit in mind, even if it's not skin tight. Yeah. I love the jacket. Love the tops. Love this little dress. There's a lot. I could see myself making several of these. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Um, had you ever heard of Pattern Fantastic before? If you've sewn one of their patterns before, I love to hear from you guys what your experience was like with the instruction booklet and all that because I can't access that without buying a pattern, obviously. So um, just love to hear feedback from anybody that's ever used their patterns before. But that is going to do it for me. I will see you all very soon. Bye.